Hi, my name is Anton Lopraff, and in this video I'm going to do a quick demo of my project called Computer Generated Floral Ornament Based on Magnetic Curves. And this project is partially based on a paper uh, called Magnetic Curves, Curvature Controlled Aesthetic Curves Using Magnetic Fields by Ling Su and David Mould. And uh, the basic goal of this project is try to produce floral, floral ornament interactively and uh, in an automated way. And if you don't know what floral ornament is, if we'll quickly go to Google and look at it, it's these types of curves that today are generally used for decoration of actual wallpapers or computer wallpapers or for any other artistic uh, design purpose. And historically, floral, floral ornament has been used for decoration of various things from illuminated manuscripts and architecture, etc. And if we're going to just quickly jump in into my program, and uh, so the basic idea here is I want to provide uh, a designer with an interactive way to create floral ornament. And this is the basic application here. It's written in Java with a bunch of controls here. And uh, let's just try to create curve quickly. So this is just a simple example of uh, what my program can produce. And uh, I can uh, interactively control here where the curve is placed. I can uh, control the direction, the way it grows. and uh, the curve is, uh, starts from uh, this initial position here, and I can also control the width of the trunk at that position. In uh, such manner, I can uh, flip the uh, initial curvature. So here it curves right. I can flip this, and I curve it in another direction. And um, let's go back here. And um, I can also, if you can see here, the curve is generally based uh, on a number of uh, levels. So here's an, one level of a curve, and then you see other branches which are smaller, which is just a natural way trees are composed, too. So here we have actually four levels for each curve. And for each level of the curve, I can control how big it is or how much it curves. So for instance, here I can uh, decrease the size of the main curve. So you can see it changes. And uh, here's I can uh, decrease the size of the second level or increase. And uh, in a similar way, I can change the curvature. So I can make it less curved or more curved and uh, et cetera. And uh, like that, I can change on uh, multiple levels. So another parameter for a level here is the number of branches for a curve. So I can increase number of branches. And uh, you can see the curves, gets, the curves get bigger. And I can add more branches at every level, thus making the curve uh, more filled in. And um, another thing I can do here, I can uh, change different types of clip art that I use uh, along the curve. So you see a bunch of leaves and flowers here. I can uh, substitute, let's say, on the latest level of a curve, I use these flowers. I can uh, check, uh, I use this checkbox to change it to a bud and or I can put a flower on some other level of the curve and you see in this way you can control what appears at each level and if you notice here definitely the curve is reacting to when I move it and the way it reacts it tries to fill in the space so you see it never goes outside the boundaries and another thing is about that it not only tries to fill in the space displayed, it also tries to make sure that none of the parts of the curve itself intersect each other. So some intersections are allowed, but uh, for the most part, uh, one piece of ornament here cannot intersect others. So that's why when I change the curvature of a certain uh, level, I can see the curve change drastically. And just because it tries to fill in the space that appears or disappears when I change the parameters here. And I obviously can reduce the number of levels here, so I can go into like one level. So this is the basic uh, starting point where I have just one level of a curve and then I can add more here. And when that's when the curve grows. And um, another interesting part of my application here is that I can also define a region for the curve for the ornaments. So instead of just making it full screen, I can uh, just define, uh, constrain the curve to some certain region that are just defined by a bunch of points. And this way you can see the curve is, tries to fill in the region specified. In a similar fashion, uh, right now I have uh, just a main curve here, which is the base of the ornament. But instead of just using an actual curve, which is generated automatically, I can try to produce a stem by myself. So using clicking here, use controllable base, I can just click a bunch of points here, uh, press edit, and uh, I can use Catmull ROM splines to define the basis of the curve. So if I click save here, as you can see, 
now the curve uses different uh, just uses the base that I've defined and this is also interesting since you can uh, you don't have to necessarily make the curve uh, make the uh, the plan grow from a certain point and uh, let's go back here to the original one and um, another interesting feature here is that I can actually try to animate the curve and see how it grows so if we click on the animate button here see what happens so yeah, it's a bit choppy here since I actually try to generate everything on a fly and I don't uh, buffer anything. But if you were to save this into frames, you would actually see a smooth transition from nothing at all to actually a complete curve. And um, this is pretty much the summary of my application. And please check out uh, the link on the bottom here, which uh, will guide you to a full report and describe the algorithm in more detail. Thank you.